August 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ephesians chapter 3 from the New Testament. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, that by revelation the divine secret was made known to me, as I wrote before briefly. When reading this, you will be able to understand my insight into this secret of Christ. Now this secret was not disclosed to people in former generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Namely, that through the gospel the Gentiles are fellow heirs, fellow members of the body, and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the exercise of his power. To me, less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given to proclaim to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to enlighten everyone about God's secret plan, a secret that has been hidden for ages in God who has created all things. The purpose of this enlightenment is that through the church, the multifaceted wisdom of God should now be disclosed to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access to God because of Christ's faithfulness. For this reason, I ask you not to lose heart because of what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on the earth is named. I pray that according to the wealth of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner person. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith so that, because you have been rooted and grounded in love, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and thus to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power that is working within us is able to do far beyond all that we ask or think, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God, I'm sorry that we don't get it. I'm sorry that we don't get everything that you have done for us. In our small little selfish minds and worlds and kingdoms we've created, we don't understand unconditional love. There's nobody else who gives that to us. And so when Paul's talking about the height and width and breadth and depth, we don't understand. But yet throughout the whole Bible, the whole thing is just this amazing love story you have for us. And yet we don't get it. And it's so easy to see that we don't get it because Paul is talking about how crazy awesome is this. God all along was going to include the Gentiles in this. This is the big mystery. This is the big secret. This is the big unveiling. It's not just for the Jews. It's for everyone who believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It is for everyone. So what I don't get is why is everyone not in awe of this incredible gift that you're offering to them and just fall to their knees and worship you? One of my favorite pastors you've put here on earth, uh, Pastor John Piper just recently did a sermon about you. No big surprise. (laughs) And he says, here is why this matters. If we don't understand that God finds us hateful and loathsome in our ugly sin, we won't be as stunned by his love for us. God saves millions of people who in and of themselves are loathsome to him until he saves them and makes them the apple of his eye which makes salvation stunningly more, if you get that. God comes to us not in our attractiveness, like, oh, I really love this person and just hate their sin. No, he finds me reprehensible, 
because of my rebellion, just like we find certain wicked people reprehensible because of their sin. And he is coming to us and he is dying for us in order that he might make us into the apple of his eye. God, we don't get that stunningly more part. We, we don't grasp the fullness of what happened on that cross. We can imagine the pain that your son went through, but we can't imagine taking on the sins of the world past and current and, and in the future. We have a hard enough time dealing with our sins day in and day out. What you have done, what your son has done, what the Holy Spirit has done in our lives, we don't understand. And so even though, even though Paul unveils this great big huge mystery and this amazing thing that the Jews and the Gentiles are both going to be offered salvation through your son who died on the cross. It's almost with a little bit of a sad note because so many people won't get it. So many people won't understand what you have truly done. They're so caught up in their own world, so caught up in their selfishness. I was for such a long time. And I still have to catch myself sometime heading down that, that very comfortable path from my past. We don't understand unconditional love. We don't understand unconditional love in the spectrum of what you have done for us. Much less day in and day out in our lives, there's nobody who gives us unconditional love. We try in our relationships, but we don't get it right. We fail on that every single day. But yet your love for us makes salvation stunningly more if we get it. But we don't get it. So God, I'm going to say it again. I am sorry. I am so sorry that we don't get it. I'm so sorry we don't understand truly what you have given up, your only son, and truly what your son gave up for us. We don't get it. We try. We read and we pray and we learn in services and we go to Easter Sunday and we try but I don't think anyone on earth has ever grasped truly what you have done for us. When I head the direction of starting to understand even a, a tiny bit of what you have done for me, my heart gets overwhelmed. I can't help but just cry and sob that you would actually choose to save somebody like me. Somebody who created her very own, very big kingdom that was all about her. Rebellion. <laughs> I led rebellion. I was like the poster child for rebellion. You had every right to hate me. And I know that that hate and anger towards my sin was there. And then you sent your son in. And you made my sin white as snow. I don't understand it, God. But every day as I walk with you more and more, I know and I can tell at least in my heart as it wells up with thankfulness at what you have done for me. I know I am starting to understand pieces of it. But just like Paul, I'm completely baffled that the least of these, how in the world can you take someone like me and do what you are doing? And my only thing that I can do is to make sure that my life glorifies you, God. That is the only way I know how to thank you for all that you've done for me, all the things I can understand that you've done for me. To live every single day of my life and make it all about you. Allowing the world to fall away more and more as you become greater and greater in my life. God, remind us today 
You must become greater. We must become less. I'm sorry we don't get it. I'm sorry we don't get how big your love is. But I do ask for the strength to make every day about you. So that my life can be lived at least fully in a human sense for everything that you created me to do. Which is to glorify you through my thoughts, through my actions, through my deeds. God, provide me the strength to honor you. To do what I was created to do. Which is so very different than what the world tells me. God, I love you so very much. It doesn't even make sense compared to how you love us. But I do love you so very much. And I'm so thankful that every day I get to fall more and more in love with you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>